835 on News Radio KWOS. Austin Peterson here with John Marsh. It's the morning show on News Radio KWOS. And joining us now, former governor Eric Greitens. Eric, good morning. Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, Austin. Thanks for playing a little Anchors Away this morning. It's good to be on with you, man. I hey. appreciate the musical selection. It's solid. <laughs> That's all solid. John Marsh, baby. Um, Eric, Thanks, John. Eric, congratulations, first of all. And my first question for you is, what does all of this mean? Well, first of all, th- thanks for having me on, Austin. It, it feels really good. I mean, it is really good to have been exonerated, and I am just so grateful that the truth is coming out. I mean, uh, you followed this. A lot of your listeners did. There was this tremendous series of reckless and false allegations that were made by lawyer politicians who wanted to drive me out. And to have the Missouri Ethics Commission come back now and say, after a 20-month investigation with, you know, whatever it said, 23 subpoenas and investigator interviews and 8,500 documents and emails, for them to be so clear and say that they found no evidence of any wrongdoing by Eric Greitens, it certainly feels good to me, and I know it feels good to so many people on our team that we've been completely exonerated. We're speaking to former Governor Eric Greitens at the moment on KWOS News Radio. Uh, Eric, the Missouri Election Commission also said that they agreed not to limit your legal retaliation options against those who have made accusations against you. Boy, there's a long list of people who libeled and defamed you, Eric. Um, what are you going to do? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. In fact, one of the things that um, that you probably noticed and that, you know, anybody who's uh, who's listening right now, you can see yourself when you read the, um, the stipulation, is that it said that, there, that this, uh, kept open for us all of our civil and criminal remedies against people who made false accusations against us. And the fact is also, like, this hurt not just me, but it ripped apart a lot of lies. There were so many people who were on our campaign. You know, there's one of my colleagues, uh, she worked with volunteers, supporters, donors all over the state. And, you know, she had her name dragged through the mud. She'd recently been married. She and her husband had bought a new house. They had to hire a lawyer. They had tens of thousands in, in, in legal bills. So this ripped apart a lot of lives. There are a lot of people who are angry about this, a lot of people who were hurt. And absolutely, we are preserving and assessing all of our, our legal options moving forward. Governor, I was at your uh, final presser at the Capitol that day, not that long ago, and we were involved in wall-to-wall coverage, and we had two a man, two a woman listeners calling in who were very, very upset with this, and their contention was, and I know still is, that you got a raw deal. Well, thanks, John. You know, it was, I think what was, you know, so clear is that people saw that this was absolutely unfair. I mean, you know, we talk about the Constitution and liberties. People forget that a lot of this was uh, rooted in secret hearings that were had where they would call in witnesses, and we weren't even allowed to have lawyers present. We couldn't question people who, who lied, and then all of these false accusations are dropped into the press. And so um, people did have a sense that it, was, that it was unfair. And one thing I would say, and I just I want your your listeners to know, I am so grateful for the tremendous kindness of people all over this state. I mean, every time I stop anywhere to pump gas, I'm in the grocery store, like people come up and they are so kind. And uh, I have really, really appreciated that. If you're just tuning in, we're speaking with former Governor Eric Reitens about him being fully exonerated. Uh, Governor, the one criticism that I hear nowadays that people say is not a question of principle, but a question of tactics. What they say is, is that you just didn't make the right friends when you came here to Jefferson City. But they, if you want to have friends in politics, get a dog, right? Yeah, I mean, look, Austin, we came and the people who we were fighting for were the people of Missouri. So did we upset a lot of politicians when we killed a politician's pay raise? Yes. Um, Did we upset a lot of insiders when we killed this absolutely corrupt tax credit scheme? Yes. I mean, and people, people, you know, in Missouri, they might not know the ins and outs of a tax credit scheme, but you tell them, look, this was a program where $130 million a year over the previous decade had been $1.3 billion. And 
audit after audit showed that only 42 cents of every dollar actually went into low-income housing. You're talking about 700 plus million dollars of taxpayer money that was stolen going into the hands of insiders. We killed that program after people have been talking about how it needed to be reformed and it needed to be changed. We killed the program because it was the right thing to do for the people of Missouri. Did that upset a lot of insiders and lobbyists? Absolutely. But it was the right thing to do. Uh, we're talking to former Governor Eric Greitens right now on News Radio KWOS. Uh, the question that everybody has on their minds, uh, Governor, there's been quite a lot of speculation that you might jump back into the governor's race. I've seen some news reports that say that that's not in the cards now. But are you leaving open the opportunity to run for office again here in the state of Missouri now that you are fully exonerated? Well, it, it is fantastic to have been uh, completely exonerated. And, you know, ever since we ever since we left, people have been asking us for kind of, you know, comments on what's happening in Missouri politics or whether or not we're going to we're going to run again. Um, for sure, Austin, I'm going to continue to serve. Um, and I've, I've loved serving in the Navy Reserve. Just this past weekend, I, I reenlisted six sailors um, in the Navy. That is a great honor to be there as these men and women take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of, uh, of the United States. Um, today, though, I really want the story to get out that we have been completely exonerated after all of these false allegations were made. And, you know, uh, you and I should should get together again soon, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll talk about the future. Let's do it. We'll have lunch. Uh, Governor, one more question about the uh, the fine that was leveled at you. Uh, your enemies here in the state, Democrats and many Republicans who are probably sweating bullets right now, said that, well, he wasn't fully exonerated because he did get a fine for his campaign. Can you please help our listeners understand what that was? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first, the great thing is anybody can go and read this themselves. You know, the MEC said they found no evidence of any wrongdoing by Eric Reigns. They said that there were two reporting violations that the campaign had, two mistakes. And they also were very clear, they said, and it's clear to us that Governor Reigns did not know about these two mistakes. So, you know, when you think back to all of the crazy and, and reckless accusations that were made against us. It is great to have been completely exonerated. John? Governor, is there some vindication there for uh, what you've watched out of St. Louis with what Kim Gardner is now now facing and some, some facts coming to light on that side of the whole argument? It is really good to have these facts coming uh, to light. And, John, as, as you and Austin know, you know, Kim Gardner is a George Soros-funded prosecutor. She received over 70 percent of her funding from George Soros. She made up false charges against me. And now her lead investigator has already been charged with seven felonies, uh, six counts of felony perjury for lying under oath and another felony count for tampering with evidence. Uh, this was a completely uh, political attack that was, you know, false from the very beginning. And it's good to see that the people who did this are finally, hopefully, going to face justice themselves. Uh, Governor, when we were on the campaign trail, or I was on the campaign trail together, uh, there were a lot of very people and very high-profile people here in the state of Missouri who threw you under the bus immediately. So you will be exercising all of your legal options for retaliations? You know, we are keeping all of our legal options open, especially against people who made these false accusations. Because, again, Austin, like, it's not just that it hurt me and uh, my family, but this, you know, hurt a tremendous number of people across the state. And I can tell you they are upset about what happened. They are angry. Um, they are glad that the truth is out and that we have been vindicated, but absolutely they're keeping all of their options open. On a personal note, Governor, it is Valentine's Day. How's your family doing? I Thank you so much for, for asking, Austin. I, I really, really appreciate that. You know, uh, this has been um, incredibly hard, and uh, I do want to say we are so thankful to everybody across the state for their prayers and their love. Um, happy to tell you that everybody's well. Uh, the boys are fun. Um, and, and Sheena and I have also decided that we, we're going to keep our, our private lives private because that's what's, what's best for the boys. Good to hear. Former Governor Eric Grimes, Navy SEAL, glad to hear all the good news. Congratulations, Governor. 
Thank you very much, Austin. John, great to be on with you guys. Thanks so much, and thanks for your thanks service you, to our country in the U.S. Navy. We appreciate that very much. All right, there it is. Former Governor Eric Greitens coming on the show fully exonerated and with the opportunity for legal retaliations. Boy, 2020 is going to be an exciting year.